Right, what is going on in Silver Jungle these days? We have here a Yorick leashing for a Nidalee, because you shouldn't be playing Nidalee in Silver, but we do have an Amumu. Now, we're going to look a lot at what we need for ruthless jungling in low elo. Except it's going to be ruthless jungling for everybody, because the level of intensity required at the moment exists in the jungle. Ah, uh, you should go to Krugs. Exists in the jungle because jungle is really in this position where you need to be good at everything. You need to be good at ganking, farming, sequencing, team fighting, tracking. It's, it's overwhelming in a lot of cases. This is why we don't play Nidalee in, in Silver. No disrespect, but your mechanics need to improve a lot in order to make it work well. But here, the Mumu. Raptors, Krugs, Red, Wolves, Gromp, Blue. Look for your ganks, look for your ganks. You can stay out after Scuttle and take them again. You just want to maximize level 6. So for Amumu, 100% we're looking level 6. We got Ward here on the uh, Nidalee, which is fantastic. Watch these two go at it top lane. We have the Vein mid, and this is, this is the thing that's tough to track for most people. But watch the Vein from our perspective. Where does she come back? There. So this right here, while you're staring at the minimap while you clear, which is what you should be doing, um, you know that she uh, probably warded somewhere on the bottom side. So you should be cautious a little bit about Nidalee's potential cut invade here. Uh, we'd obviously have, for some reason, the RE bottom lane support, as well as the Vayne mid. Um, I don't know what's going on with that, but hey, I've seen more surprising things in Korean Hailo, to be honest with you. Nice drag there. I'm not sure the drag is worth on the second rotation versus just doing the grump here. Obviously, it's faster, but if you're going to be done at 330 or 325 regardless, you might as well just have better sequencing on the second rotation uh, because if you don't get the ganks off and you don't... Nice drags, though. Nice drags. I like that. If you don't get these ganks off and this pressure off, then you want to be able to have good sequencing, right? Because it guarantees you a certain amount of income. Now, here, of course, we're finishing this at 333, which is super slow. Nidalee caught up quite a bit, which is obviously on the red side. And at this stage, if you know Nidalee started on the top side, guys, it's 341. Where's Nidalee? Is she ganking? Is she on the scuttle? I don't know where she is. So what you need to do, you absolutely must head to Vukayu.gg. Not only do I have a free jungle improvement resource, I also have a dedicated program with jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching classes, a jungle VOD library, special weekly content you'll see nowhere else, as well as all of this hosted in a private jungle discord. And if there is one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers go from low elo to high elo, as seen by the great number of success stories from the end of last season and already the beginning of season 14. So to climb faster than everybody you know and to jungle diff every game you play, head to Vukayu.gg or click the link in the description below is go and hit this plant to find out it's the same as if you're playing against a cart a hacker of a brand you see them start top side you know they're full clearing down at 3 30 you're like should they not have shown already and then they haven't and you realize oh maybe they're slower clearing because you know i was but i'm a moo hit the plant to see where they are what would we see if we did that right now boom you would see her in the brush, you'd see the ward, you'd know what was going on, and now you can position your body accordingly. Should I counter gank it? Should I just take the crab and run away? Should I just go back to base? You can make that decision for yourself, right? Because you know there's a ward, you can clear it, you see this, again, experience and gold will take it. You look at this, do I just go for the scuttle crab? And now, honestly, if you look at the map as it is, what would you do here? And the discipline to be intense in the jungle, to be ruthless, sometimes means knowing when not to fight, right? Very important out of war reference again. You, you've got to know, all right, look, I give you this battle because it doesn't matter, right? And that's largely my philosophy at the moment. Oh, they're on the dragon. I can't do it. Well, I'll go topside and counter jungle, take these things. Like you've got to think very much in terms of, all right, I'll let you have the thing you want because I'm going to have two of something else that's more valuable. So here you hit this, you see this, you look at the situation and you're like, you know what? Maybe we could do something, but if you don't feel like you could match this 3v3, and of course the vein has prior, hit the plant clear, go back to base direct, go straight here, okay, and watch the Nidalee. Watch her very cautiously, all right? See if she ganks the lane, see if she ganks mid lane. You will have itemization advantage. What we don't want to do is be in this situation because there's no reason, oh dear me, there's no reason to die here. There's no reason for this whatsoever because, yeah, you know, Nidalee is, is going to beat us in this situation, but we know that she's down there because she started topside. She fully sequenced down. We have a plant. The biggest thing you can do in silver to get to high elo, to get to gold, yeah, I literally mean high elo, is know when there is a fight and know when there is no fight. Now, I know we're all familiar with the clips of Conqueror and Mumu doing the damage. I don't really care about that, right? What I care about is that we have numbers disadvantaged with mid prior. And now you see the great pings here from the Nidalee saying, 
Mumu, he's going top side. He's going top side. I like this. I like this pressure. Okay, I like this pressure game. So she's gonna cross over. We have prior. Obviously, we don't have prior top lane. She wants to get in the Mumu's face. The Mumu's definitely based. That is the important thing here. But she has smite. Perfect. 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 And what should the Mumu have done instead? To counter this, you say? Immediately out of base, top lane. Go for the scuttle. Go for the scuttle. Go for the scuttle. Go, 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 go. Do we have a smite up? Do we have a smite up? Obviously, we do. We have two smites up. So quickly snack this sucker right now. Oh, but good. And why is it good? Because the Krugs are spawning. So while... What are we sitting on? We do have a warding totem. Hit the plant, obviously, just to make sure you have vision and deny usage of it. Given that you have a warding totem, I think it'd be okay just to put one right here to see if Nidalee, once she crosses mid, goes into my jungle. I want to see that. I also don't want her to play it through with me. We go and do the Scarlet Crab. We see Nidalee cross over, right? da 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 you smite it. You can't go towards her because you'll be 2v1, but you do have top prior. So what you can do is loop back around for the Krugs. Haha, <laughs> excellent. Now the Nidalee sees this, anticipates this, and goes into your jungle, hits the Scribes Boom onto you, and takes your Raptors away. Not so good. Instead, what you can do is hit this away, leave the control, uh, leave a uh, warding totem down, snack this, take this. If you see her go for this, you can make the determination of, can I fight it or not? And if you can't, oh well. Literally, that would be my response here, because you still scuttled, you still got the second rotation, you're going to go around the outside, whoopsie, around the outside, hit the plant, and go to the bottom side, boof, da da boof. Or you can cut in and just gank bottom lane straight up. Hey, how you doing? And also what's important is the tracking. It'll be 5 minutes, 5 minutes, 10, 20 on the clock. What it means is you can also do this, go around the outside, so out of base, scuttle, snack, outside, cut in, gank yes or no. Gank yes or no, or counter jungle, and then gank. So now you take the raptors back. That's what I would envision might happen. So let's see what actually does happen. We obviously lose that. We go back out. We take the plant away, which is great. And Nidalee sees where you are, and she invades you. This is exactly what you don't want. Hits a spear. She does have an item disadvantage, but Yorick has lane advantage. And this is why I said to do it as well, because now you have told her where you are. You did the raptors first for no particular reason. You're being chunked out here. All right, yeah, you're doing a lot of damage, and one can assess, should we, doing, should we be doing this fight or not? Oh, we're dead. You know, oh, oh, there we go. We shouldn't be in this situation. We're just giving Nidalee shit for free. Now, Nidalee's giving something for free as well, potentially. Heal. Nice auto attack. There we go. One more spear. Oh, we don't even need a spear. Oh, we're going to need one. Oh, the silence. I don't, I just don't like watching, watching the circus. Um, none of this should be happening in this matter. The fight should be very, you know, I'd rather you have the most powerful weapon on the earth that you can only fire, a big laser gun that you can only fire three times. You want the Death Star, all right? I'd rather have the Death Star than a bunch of Star Destroyers in this particular situation because I would rather a very lethal laser blow up the Nidalee's planet every single time than trying to outmaneuver small fighters with my Star destroys and invariably losing because we're incompetent. It's it's just not really what you want to do in the jungle anymore. I'd rather map control this thing with laser precision, gank the bottom lane, go back here, get six, fight her if she comes down, or just go for grubs afterwards. Like real precision ruthlessness, right? That's that's really what you want. And the and Mumu has been silly. And the Nidley has not played particularly interestingly, but the Mumu has basically said, hey Nidley. What if I help you be ruthless against me? What if I help you kill me? What if I help you get fed? That's all that's happened. Ugh. <sighs> this itemization makes me quiver. Sheen. I know it's fine, but... I know it's fine, but like... Just raw AP is just so much more useful <laughs> in so many cases. Uh, we obviously are able to snack away the other side and... Uh, Go ahead and take the grubbies, which is fine, but like the sequencing is a little off here. We look at the mid lane here. We're level six at seven minutes thirty, which is obviously not so good. Here's Nidalee. Because I know the Sheen's fine, but like I just don't, don't like it. I like the blasting ones and the the Aether Wisps more so. Such is life. Turn off your toggle, buddy boy. Nope. Here we go. Alt stun. Okay. Mechanics, as I said. I mean, yeah, it's true. 
But, you know, if you can't hit a Mumu Q on a static target... Then, um... You know, what's a Nidley Spear? You might as well just play Nidley, right? Yeah. So, you know, the problem here is the Nidley now has the ability... We have big jungle spacing, right? The Mumu's top side, the Nidley's bottom side. If the Nidley's gonna show up here and get all of these kills, right? And able to be able to take these things away. All right, and then go for this dragon as we go top side. That's great, but this is exactly what I'm telling a lot of junglers to think about. All right, if the Amumu went down here, he does not have the exact timers on these camps. He might get lucky and be able to counter jungle this stuff anyway. But the Nidli, I like what this is in principle. And in principle, I want you to listen to this if you're a ganking style jungler. She did some stuff, did some stuff, did some stuff, falls back to this into this. This cannot be counter jungled at this moment. And in theory, if the Amumu didn't have a gank and he just ran into your jungle, there'd be nothing to counter jungle. See, now if he did, there would be. But that's him being bad and it sometimes rewards you. But overall, when I'm playing on the other side of the map, I don't want camps to be readily available for counter jungling. And that's that's the most important thing here. So we do the dragon, we overstay a little bit, and we die, you know, such as silver. Always, actually, such as silver, I'm sorry, that's so disrespectful. Such as everybody. Let's really just cover the Grandmaster game on the gameplay channel and... Um, same same thing happened. Human human error, I suppose, is the way to summarize that. So, bottom side now into the camps. Nidalee's obviously dead. At this stage, I would assume uh, yeah, we've seen her down here. If she was good, if she were good, I would assume maybe a bottom side quadrant cut in, so that this is uncounter jungleable again, and then I can fall back to my top side quadrant. If she was bad. I could envision taking this into this, and then maybe I can counter jungle. You'd have to see. Basically, this is where your deep vision and your tracking comes in, and your timers come into play. So, for the memo here, we do the quadrant, we go upside, let's see what the Nidalee decides to do. And uh, I've, I've gone too quickly. <laughs> She's already bottom lane. It's, uh, it's 2 a.m., I'm recording this quite late. Shows up bottom side, so now you know you got free grubbies. Which, again, now the Nidalee has made the error so if this was the play she was always going to make, do the top side quadrant first, red buff, gank it, now you can fall back to your red side quadrant. No counter jungle. Now though, the Amumu can easily take all the grubs and counter jungle, and this slingshot, I feel like, is pretty decent. Because he's going to start to rinse the camps a little bit. Mid lane, we got a fight here. Alt is up. Don't need to use it. Don't need to use it! He's wasting his ult a little bit. Obviously, that's better than counter jungling. That's a good play. Yeah, it's fine. If Nidalee's still bot, if people are dead, then we can counter jungle. We'll do it. That's good, though, from the movement here. The CS moves, right? The CS moves. She's running around the map with no real focus. And the Amumu just did a couple sequences. And he, he's 3-2-2 two, two all of a sudden. Gold amount 5.3 to 5.1. He's solidly positioned. Nice spear, though. Very nice spear. Well done by the Nidalee. Eating my words from the first clear. A lot of damage there from the Vayne and the Ash and the Nidalee. He takes another kill. Amumu's now on the bottom side. Oh, well. You just have to smile. There's nothing you can do. A lot of deep wards here, though, by the blue team. I like that. I like that these wards, uh... I like these wards. Good shit. Obviously here, you know that they're in your jungle. What you should be doing is just giving up the whole side. Uh, we've ult in 20 seconds. If she wants to commit, though, then she can die. I don't think we needed to flash out, though. You got smite, you got another Q. I don't think we needed to, to flash out there. I think that's a big thing for low elo players. Learning the limits of your champion, guys. Seriously. Know that- Oh, the Nidalee jumped on me in a precarious situation. I guess I'll smite and hit my Q, guarantees it. Then I'll hit the next Q and she'll die, right? You got two Qs and a smite. There's no reason to back out of that situation. Uh, give your Kaiser a kill. I think you'd be in a, in a good spot. Uh, Nidley. Lich Bane completed. Uh, he's cutting back here. Hmm. 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 I would feel strong enough at this stage that I would probably want to, to contest something like this because Chugath is in a really good spot. And while I, I see the gank down here, that's not really the strong suit, right? Like this is not the win condition at the moment. The Tom Kench Kaiser look at the, looking at everything are not the win condition. But I'm pretty strong as a moment and my Chugath is pretty strong and I'm a really soul. That's what I would think if I were in this situation. Cut across here, you got the big fat guy, you got this guy, you got some camps you can take, don't go looping back down. Let's make this a fight. We got ult up. I think we can win the game from this, right? So instead, though, we go bottom lane. And ult and kill the Ari, which is great. All right. 
Nidalee decides not to even go for the Herald. You don't know this. This is a results-based thinking. You know, like, this is a good thing to go for. I have no issue with this. But I would have preferred to shut down the Nidalee, shut down the, the, the Vayne potentially with that play around the Herald, using my ult there, because I feel like bottom lane would have died anyway. Nidalee's top side. Does it make sense? I think that's a better play. And then you can always fall back and contest the next dragon and, and such things. Uh, we really want level 11 as soon as possible, but he's done a solid job with the sequencing after the early phases. Pretty happy with that. Rallian Sol is not doing so much. Careful, guys. Don't overstay. Rallian Sol is the base. Got a crab. Yes. Good. Ash, can we assassinate? Decide what you can and cannot do as a champion. But no, I'm okay with like this ramping up nicely now. The Leandre's rush is very, very good. That's great. Level 11, please. Nice. Nidalee, level 9 still. Just a bunch of camps, a bunch of sequences. Even if you mess up early, you can still come back in the game. But against another champion who's playing well, like the Nidalee, not well, but like using the mistakes, right? That Nidalee will destroy you. Really, that Nidalee will destroy you. And uh, the Amumu has, you know, <laughs> what? The Amumu um, has gotten a little bit lucky that the Nidalee didn't really push that ruthlessness again. And that's the big thing, right? So, if you are the Nidalee here, you had this good early phase, you were in a pretty good position, but you didn't continue calculated ruthlessness against the Amumu. And the Amumu, he ruthlessly farmed. And he used his ult with prejudice. And that's okay when you are losing a game. Because you need to farm, you need to kill, you need to get back in the game somewhere, you can't just chill. And all he did was gank a little bit, sequence a bunch, gank a little bit, sequence a bunch, take a dragon, Great, fantastic, right? Map control. The Nidalee just didn't track him. She didn't get in his face. She didn't snowball the bottom line properly. She hasn't controlled the objectives at all. And there's no reason why she shouldn't have, right? That's a big problem right now. Because she had the gold. She has the gold. She has the gold. But the Amumu also has the gold, right? Also has a KP and he has the objectives. Now there, you got to hold your Q a little bit more. Nidalee's a tough one. She can just go cat form. Yeah, yeah, like this is a waste of time, right? You can hold the wave, you can take the... Honestly, I, I'm, I'm probably a little greedy here, but greedy in a bad way. I go for the Herald and I just let them take the turret. Like, yeah, yeah, take the turret, nothing to do about it. Let me take this one, gank top lane. Then I'll use the Herald here and push double while you fight down here. So I think that's a really cool way to think about it as well. Can we do it already? There we go. Is it warded up? They probably just assume he's on it. This is what you don't want, right? You don't want to be collapsed upon. If you're collapsed upon while you do objectives. There you go. If you're collapsed upon while you do objectives and you have prior, I don't want to hear, you know, I was collapsed upon, my laners didn't rotate and I died. If you're always getting rotated on by the enemy jungler, right, or these situations like this, it's you. Your timing is off. Because if they're all fisting and rotating down here doing nothing, and you're up here doing nothing, you could have just done something with that time, and now they are not able to rotate to anything. So that, that's an important thing as well. If you're always rotated on, even with prior situations, you're probably too slow to make the decision. And of course, it's a tough thing to do, but that's part of jungling, right? Learning to make that decision. So free herald for the Nidalee. Gold amount is in blue team's favor, solid. Aurelian Soul is farming it up, and Mumu is still very strong. They do have a very, very, very good team fight. Aurelian Soul is going to die because he overstayed low HP again. We're going to catch his wave here. Ash is going back to base, and Mumu's back on the field. Kai's trying to hold. There's no reason to waste your Herald here. Yes, Nidalee, yes. Oof. <laughs> yes, get into the jungle, take some camps. And Mumu takes one camp, decides to go hold it. Are they going to overcommit? Yes, we have everybody rotating. Ooh. Nidalee's running away. Nidalee's running away. Nidalee's running away. Tom can't just push the Nidalee out. We have Flash R if we need it. Oh, beautiful Amumu. Beautiful, lovely, wonderful. Excellent work. Kaisa, we have, um, I was going to say we hold, but we don't. There it is. Wonderful. So that's it. If you need to give up the turret, give up the turret. Do a camp. If that's it and that's the business, carry on farming. Make a pick, push another wave, right? Go and count a jungle. If they keep staying over and Nidalee goes to the top side here, right? Make the collapse, make the pick. It's huge. Nidalee... It's good to counter jungle here, but you're not running away. Where are you going? You know, you're not running to the Yorick. You're needing to shadow this scenario, but honestly, this is just a greed play by everybody involved, regardless. Um, and if you're going to rotate here, then you accept... Oh, oh dear, that was... 
Oh dear. Yeah, that was a greed greed and grief play. Yeah, that's 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 game throwing. Huge. Good job, Lily Mimo. I like that. That was nice. Although now we should have a bit more ruthlessness, right? What does that mean here? What are you doing? <laughs> like, watch your Mimo. Okay, push, 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 push. Everybody's dead. Ash is bottom lane. Everybody's dead. Take a take a quadrant. What are we doing next? Dragon? Which quadrant are you taking? Take something. Take something. Counter jungling quickly. Let's go. Check. Q of the wall. Push this wave again. If you are a Mundo, if you're something that can hit turrets, go hit the turret right now. More, more intensity with this stuff. Take more all the time. All the time. That's how you climb. All right? When you do that and you have the ability to say, mine, that's when you win. When you keep giving shit away for free, like there should be no quadrant here whatsoever. And if you have a Herald, that's when you bust it. Obviously, we didn't have the Herald, but you know, for sure. Kaiser got the right idea, but this should be here. I would have done immediately after this, you take the turret, you take the Raptors, you take the Krugs, you loop back around to the Dragon, Kaiser shows up with you, Ch uh, Cholgath rotates over here, we click, we quickly snack this up, now you have a lot of cash money pocket, you can go back, go back to base if you want to. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> well, you know, engage ADC. I don't ever want to hear about it again. Broken. No. Like, obviously, ADCs uh, do that a lot and they die, but in this particular case, that was quite funny. And when we did have ult, if you don't need to base and you can actually just get the kill, do it. I like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come, 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 come. Guys, it's a good call. It's actually a legitimately good call. Let's go. Three dead. Watching the combat timers, the respawn timers. Uh, we got this down here. Yorick is obviously up here. We got Ash in the mid lane. They're all respawning. Huge. Beautiful from this member. Love it. Love it. The other, the other sequencing was off. The decision making was off a little bit. Um, but this late early game, mid game has been really, really nice. Great example of how to take over a game. And he's doing it without being ruthless. Imagine taking all of those camps as well. You're going to have people so far behind, so starved, that they have nothing to do. And in low elo, what do they do when they have nothing to do? They just run at you and die more. They don't have the patience to say, look, we need to just wait until you tilt into us and make a mistake. Now, here's the problem, though. The Amumu has got 2,300 gold. With Baron, his team have already based on, on the map looking to do stuff. He is most likely going to recall here, is he? Or just going to hold top lane? This is a big problem that I see a lot of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is on Amumu. This is on Amumu. You've got to be with your team right now. If they want to push and take this turret, I don't care. Why? Because my whole team is just Astra pushing this. If someone wants to tilt split, let them. Right? If the Nidalee wants to do this with the Herald, let her. I mean, <laughs> she's going to take it, but we'll here, if you're here right now with everybody, you win. But if Reliant Soul's sagging off because he doesn't know what to do, this guy's doing Grump because he knows you're top lane, Kai's is pushing because he's got nothing else to do, be the leader here, be the shepherd. And that is why people throw games in this MMR range. Because you have Baron, you just made huge plays, and everyone decided to split up. The enemy have no choice but to group up unless they win. This is problem. Very big one. His vein, frozen out. Oof, I think he took damage, guys. Yeah, this is the problem. He's just holding top lane. Just let it go. <laughs> There's no reason. There's no reason. Like, if, even if he gets kills here, yeah, I don't care anymore. Like, this is ridiculous. He's got, what, 3k? Yeah, there you go. Three, literally 3k in pocket. Nidalee's catching this. Like, your Baron has been completely wasted. Is it expended yet? Three quarters done. Three quarters done. Two bot lane, though. That's huge. Vayne dead. Kaiser can push. See, why weren't we doing this? Why weren't you doing this for all of Baron? All he had to do was take the camps, hold top once, back to base, join his team immediately, win the fight, shove, shove, shove. Now everyone's here, and these two inhib inhibs are dead. That's why you don't win games in low elo, because you uh, you take too long to get to this point. Good job, Kaisa. Now, Kaisa has uh, 990 in pocket. Um, I've gone and seen a mosquito. Uh, <laughs> the midliner is 2.3. You know... There's no reason to base if there's a lot of dead people, but I'm happy with everyone just recalling their, spending their cash monies and grouping up with the dragon. Absolutely huge that they do that. And the Amumu here again, all of this, you can look at this and say, well, like, what are they doing? But they're just doing the inverse of what the Amumu is doing, right? It's completely the inverse of what he has done after the Baron. And you can't complain. Do we have a QR here? That one misses. Do we have another one to use, or do we want to save it for potential dragon plays? We observe. Oh, nice. Meow cats. 
Uh, guys, you have no Kaisa. You have no Kaisa. You have no Kaisa. Mumu's act no, for one. Now I agree for the Mumu. The only time I would take this fight is if I'm the Zyra and I'm like 25 and zero and I'm a Fed Mundo and I just run people over and we don't need the Kaisa. And if you don't feel like you could do that, respect the map. Pull back. Give up the Draken if you need to. Well, they're doing it, but two people top. Yeah, just play numbers advantage, guys. Just numbers advantage. Do we have four and they have three? What is the ratio? They're just coin flipping these things now. It's really silly. You just push the wave. Oh no, they took a drag. Who cares? Push the wave, take the inhib. Kite up and take all of this. Reset and catch this and take this, and now you set up for the Baron. Now you got supers pushing down mid. Does it matter that you give up this fire dragon if you take an inhib, all those shit? Hold the wave and then do Baron? No, because you're going to have supers push in. Someone will have to hold it, and that's when you eviscerate. Someone can collapse on this too. Like, you could always, as I say, shove, take, base, group, collapse, and kill. Sequence up and do the Baron as well. Someone else can take this one. There's a lot of things you can do. Nidalee actually, st did she steal it with a smite or? I wasn't paying attention. We was talking about Zamako. Did she take it with a, a spear? No way, right? We have sm Well... That was weird. <laughs> There's no reason you should ever lose it with Cho'Gath ult uh, and the smite. Like, that should never be gone, so... Here's the thing. If you're gonna lose the dragon anyway 50-50, and if it's a 50-50 possibility, then do something else that's more guaranteed. And the guaranteed is usually a ruthless play. Not a safe play of being in your jungle at this phase of the game. It's in their jungle, pushing up for inhibs, right? That's the kind of stuff we want. So... Now we sequence. Vayne's down here, we observe... Do we observe greatness? My support is 2v1ing bot lane. Because Tom Kench moment. Jemmy's great. Everyone loves him. Just stop farming, push! You know you got 14 people bot lane, push! Push, why are you farming? Ruthlessness is the word of the day. And if your ruthlessness says I'm going to do my raptors into Krugs... It's like saying, um... Uh, what the hell was it? It was like Fallout, right? You know, sp small spoiler alert, but uh, I'll try and keep it really, really general. It's like being in a situation where you do something wrong and they need to kick you out of something and you think you're going to be killed. Like, that's it, right? You're going to be killed, cut open and eaten or something like that, experimented on. But instead, they're like, because of this crime you've committed against us, you are forced to leave. I get to leave? You have to leave and we will give you a month of supplies. And you're never welcome back. But what you wanted was to leave in the first place. So you've got to think, how do you want to respond to um, these kinds of situations, right? Someone wrongs you by existing, in which case the enemy jungler. Do you want to be like, get out of my jungle. And you know what? For being in my jungle, have some of my grump. Doesn't sound, it sounds useless, right? So you've you got to be like, no, I'm taking everything. It's got to be a different mindset. And uh, that was really tough to explain, which I didn't really, I think, uh, without being able to spoil anything, but it is what it is. So here, a nice pick again, good fight, off to the Baron, everyone's going to contest, if they're going to contest, now you kill them because you have numbers advantage, perfect, why are you contesting, you shouldn't be, typical things, onto the blue, hello Nidley, yes, Nidley, beautiful, beautiful for a moment, not for, for us to witness, and we should be able to close out with our whole team here for once, using the, uh, the six grubs that we have, there we go, oh, nomsy, 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 does he really have, okay, no, I was gonna say that's Kaisers, right? Sorry, I really souls. And there we go. So that's a game of League of Legends, a game that should have been closed maybe eight minutes ago, but that's why it's a great total elo guide for you in the new patch and the new world environment. But remember that how you need to think, high pressure, intensity, and just make good on make good on your decisions as best you can. But don't give anything away free. Good luck in your games, and I'll see you all in the next one.